The Congress was a seminal event in history, as it redrew the European map after the Napoleonic Wars. The business of the Congress took place at the Chancellor's residence in central Vienna. Well, this is where so much of what went on, so much of the future of Europe was all decided in these rooms here, particularly in this one, the Congressa. And what's significant about this one is it's got five doors. Why five doors? Why five doors? Because initially there were four main negotiators in the Congress of Vienna, and then, because Talleyrand was so clever, there were five. And they each had to have their own door. The ego was so big, they were such superstars, they had to be equal. So they so each they had to have worked. one. They all worked together. At the same time, oh, yeah, wow. absolutely. It was like <laughs> oh, all God. five big musical stars together coming in and their huge entourages, all their mistresses, all their girls, everything. It was a big show. Wow, fantastic. And what's really funny is that, yes, this is the five-door room, the room of all the heroes, but the room wasn't really set up for it. So they had to kind of make these symbolic doors. And this one isn't really a door, it's more of a tiny cupboard. Like a broom cupboard, Like a broom really. cupboard, just ideal for all my mops. <laughs> I wonder who was inside that. Who was in disgrace? It wasn't the French, I bet. Never. <laughs> With the five main players terrified of being outmaneuvered by one another, negotiations were to go on for years. There's a recipe that dates from around this period that has caused much debate on the international stage. It's the rum barber. The Polish and the French think it's their invention. I can't take any credit for this recipe because this is an original one. It's called Rum Baba. We all heard about it, but it's got a lot of history about it. So as we go along, I will explain to you where they come from. First, the batter. Mix eggs and sugar until light and fluffy. Add melted unsalted butter, then warm milk, some plain flour and dry yeast. And I'm going to keep it to the uh, original recipes. I'm going to cook it in a proper Rum Baba mold. That's been greased with some butter and a bit of plain flour as well, just to make it easy to, uh, to release. And we're just going to pour the batter inside. OK, so that's going to go in the oven. Temperature of 170 degrees. Um, not too, too hot, because we want the yeast to do um, a business and then make it um, rise our cakes. And probably around 50 minutes. Uh, it's quite a large cake, as you can see, so in the oven. This has given us enough time now to prepare the filling of our rumbaba. We're going to make it a creme pâtissière. So to start, we're going to take our egg yolks. And I've got some hot milk. We're going to whisk in some caster sugar. So it's a little bit of a story about where the uh, rumbaba come from. First of all, the name wasn't rumbaba originally. It was calling Alibaba by the king of Poland who loved that dessert and he loved the story of Alibaba, so he decided to call it Alibaba. And his pastry chef um, moved out um, of Poland and came to work in Paris at the pâtisserie, it was still very famous this day, it was called Stoller. So they called it Rambaba, and that pâtisserie before it called Stoller was called Obaba. So corn flour in the mixture. So I'm just going to pour the hot milk on my mixture, and I'm going to add the original ingredients, which is a bit unusual, some saffron. So we're going to mix that with our hot milk and egg mixture. And I know a lot of you will be surprised to use saffron in pastries, but it does work very, very well. So that's going to go back in the pan, and we're going to cook it back on the stove to thicken it. So you can see it's thickening quite quickly. Unsalted butter and a little drop of natural vanilla. Mm, that's a beautiful. The saffron is quite a sweet taste anyway, so it does work very well with pastries. Okay, so that's lovely and glossy, and we're gonna leave that here to cool down till we put our cake together. But the next step is to make the syrup, because our baba, when it come out from the oven, we're gonna soak it with a syrup. So to do the syrup, add some water, the sugar syrup, and the tea. This is a very good quality Indian tea, and the dark rum as well. 
Okay, so that's going to go on the stove for around five minutes, take it to the boil to get nice and thick and to infuse all the beautiful flavours from the Indian tea on a dark rum. Clean knife, so it's ready. I'm just going to move it here. And look, it's nicely risen. It's hot. Okay, that's very nice. So I'm just gonna cut gently. Try to cut the bottom flat. Sif the tea leaves, and the tea just give an amazing fragrance to um, to the syrup. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna gently pour the syrup and soak our baba. And take your time when you do that. Don't go all in once. Wait for the syrup to go in and you carry on. We need to have all the syrup. When you put all the syrup in, after that you can leave it to cool down. So all the flavors and all the syrup really can go right inside our cake before you decorate it. The longer you leave the baba to soak, the better. Okay, so our baba is completely cold now. You can see most of the syrup is gone now. We're gonna give it a bit of a shiny gloss by brushing some melted apricot preserve. And this as well will stop it for the outside to dry it out. It straight away looks so much better, you know, glossy. Here we are. And the next step, the creme pâtissière. I'm gonna add to that some golden sultanas that has been soaked overnight in dark rum. And this is sticking to the original recipe. And I'm just gonna fill the center of the cake. And now I'm gonna decorate it with some fresh seasonal berries. Final touch, a little bit of icing sugar. Here we are. Maybe a 200 years old recipe, but still as fabulous today. Delicious rum baba.